So a recent survey in InfoSecurity Magazine revealed ransomware as the most prevalent cyber attack in 2020. And today I've got something special for you. We're going to configure ransomware protection in Windows 10 followed by a must have incident recovery feature. And then I'll demonstrate a great free ransomware simulator you can use to validate your protection actually works. Let's get started. So if you've not fully implemented and tested ransomware defense on Windows 10, this is going to be a great use of the next 10 minutes of your time. And as I mentioned, we're going to wrap this session up with a great free tool that will allow you to simulate ransomware attacks. Okay, so to get our ransomware protection fully in place and configured. Step one is we need to enable controlled folders. So I'm just gonna go down here to the uh, search bar and I'll type Defender. And this is going to bring up my virus and threat protection. So I'll click on virus and threat protection and I'm going to scroll down to ransomware protection and I'll click on manage ransomware protection. And you'll notice here that there's a switch where I can toggle this on or off. So incidentally, we can configure this with group policy as well if we want to configure this for multiple users. And in fact, I'll just look at my domain controller here. I have a group policy open to the area where uh, the three settings related to controlled folders are located. Make sure you check the description uh, under this video where I'll have a link to the group policy uh, configuration instructions that you'll need. So there are three settings here. There's number one, configuring controlled folder access, which is essentially enabling or disabling, putting it in audit mode or block mode. Um, so, so really allowing you to configure your uh, rollout process, because generally speaking, you're going to enable audit mode first, just to see what might be blocked. You're gonna roll this out using uh, you know, some sort of ring theory where you have a, a tight uh, limited pilot, then a broader pilot, and then full deployment. So, so anyway, I can, I can enable uh, controlled folder access. I can then configure my protected folders under this next setting and list in here the, uh, the folders that I'd like to protect. There are some that are protected by default, which I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, and then I can configure my allowed applications. In my experience, you're going to find that while Defender Antivirus is automatically determining which apps should be trusted, you're going to need to come in here and add some of your, your line of business apps and your third-party apps. Okay, and again, instructions in the uh, within a link in the uh, video description, so make sure you check that out. So here under ransomware protection, I'll click on protected folders and I can see a list of the folders that are protected by default and I can add more here as well. So when we get ready to perform our ransomware simulation, we're going to come back here to add some additional folders. So I'll just minimize that for now. Now step two, we're going to enable what I said is a must have incident recovery feature and that is uh, previous versions on our files, the ability to go back and recover previous versions of our files. So in a ransomware scenario, this is important because controlled folders uh, really limits the damage, but it doesn't completely uh, ensure that zero files get locked. It, it can take us down to maybe hundreds of files getting locked instead of thousands, tens of thousands, or even more. It's going to kick in pretty quickly, but some files may get locked and previous versions can help us roll back to pre-locked condition, so to speak. So I'm on a SharePoint site here, and this is really just where I have a document library, and I'm going to go to the, uh, the gear in the upper right here, which is settings. And then I'll go to site contents. And under site contents, I'll get a list, of, of course, of my site contents. And I'm going to go to documents and to the ellipsis by the documents folder, those three dots. And I will click on that ellipsis and click settings again. And under here, I'm going to find the versioning settings. 
Don't worry about that crazy long navigation. Go to the description below the video, a link for this, uh, the instructions for this step as well. So basically step two. And you'll notice here that I've configured uh, creating major versions. So this is going to give me versions one, two, three, four, et cetera. I'm keeping 500 major versions, maybe a little excessive. Uh, use your judgment there. And what this results in, when I just go over to my document library, I'll look at here in my doc library, I've got a text file and I'm just going to click on the ellipsis, those three dots right next to that file. I'll select version history and you'll see here I have a version history so I can roll back to a safe version of the file. So I like to have that in place as a protection mechanism. And that is step two. Mm -hmm. So the final step is we're going to talk about what I mentioned as a great free ransomware simulator. Speaking of free, your Azure VMs are built by the minute, so you only want them running when you're using them. And that's where the Azure Resource Scheduler comes in. With a simple web UI to schedule your VM starts and stops, a free tier that fully covers smaller environments like your dev and exam prep lab, and it's now available in the Azure Marketplace. So we're going to get that great free ransomware simulator from a company called Know Before that's made their name in the anti-phishing industry. So you can use their products to run phishing simulations in your environment to train your users on the right behavior uh, when it comes to those potentially malicious downloads. And you'll basically go to the Know Before page and find the ransom page. Uh, I have a link down in the description below this video, of course. And really all you have to do is you know, first fill out the form here. So you're gonna give them just the, the standard information, name, email, uh, location, and your industry. You'll notice they don't even ask a company name. I suppose they pick that up from your email address. And then you get this nice welcome email that has a download to the Ransom tool, as well as a link to the instructions. Easy peasy. So you're gonna download a single uh, executable. It's just a single .exe file. Uh, the one downside I would say to that uh, .exe file is that Defender actually sees it as ransomware. It's mentioned in the Ransom product manual. So essentially you have to set an exception, get it installed, and then we have to enable controlled folder access. So assuming you've turned the feature on, there are a couple of, of changes you need to make. Number one, uh, as we perform the test, we'll need to add the test folders that are created in the uh, no before uh, directory that's created at the root of your C drive. Now you'll also need to add some applications as exceptions to controlled folders. Specifically, they have you add command.exe and notepad.exe, which are both Windows system utilities, as well as a start.exe in the no before directory. That's theirs. So essentially, we'll go to virus and threat protection and then to ransomware protection, and we'll click on allow an app through controlled folder access. We're going to add those three executables which are leveraged by the simulator. So once you have those added, we should be able to run simulations without that being caught, uh, those activities being caught uh, preemptively as malicious. So if I go into that no before directory under RS simulator, you'll see a test folder and uh, there's a folder that contains the test and another that contains the test files that get copied out for the test. The test files are just uh, essentially office documents and images. So just know that's down there. Uh, so you, you can see I've run the test before here. So I've, I've already uh, whitelisted some of these by, or protected some of these by adding their folder from the right column into controlled folders. So what I'll do is for strong crypto net here, I'll, for that variant, I'll go ahead and add that folder under controlled folder protection. So as those files get copied in there, they will be protected by the controlled folders feature, which means we should see that test, which currently shows as red on the Ransom UI, flip to green. So uh, once we've added that to controlled folders, I'm gonna hit check access. This normally takes a couple of minutes to run. I'm gonna fast forward this and you'll see it uh, complete here in just a handful of seconds. But the important part, important part being that we'll see 
that flip of the strong crypto net to green, which in fact we do. And you can simply rinse and repeat uh, to perform that simulation across all of these many variants that are covered uh, by the Know Before Ransom tool. So really uh, a great tool in its own right and, and something you should incorporate into your periodic uh, process of, of simulating fishing. I really see this as something you could run alongside your, your uh, fishing simulations to make sure that uh, user behavior is where it needs to be and you know couple that with some user education and i think you're good to go and there you have it that is step three so now you have uh, ransomware simulations so you can prove that you're protected if you like what you saw today be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get a heads up anytime we drop a new video if you have questions leave us a comment reach out on linkedin good luck take care see you in the next video